Hello. Hi. So uh, we just. <laughs> It's really hard to believe that on November 27th of this year, Sports by Modern Baseball will be seven years old. It's also really hard to believe and accept that they're gone. But at the same time, it's equally as tough to believe that a band this great ever existed in the first place. We are all truly blessed by a band that we absolutely did not deserve, but needed. Some were very lucky and got to watch them from the very beginning until now, and some may have discovered them just this week. The work of Jake, Brendan, Ian, and Sean will without a doubt be remembered for years to come on its own merit because their work truly was that good and that memorable. But I wish to do a very tiny part of keeping the spirit of modern baseball alive. This introduction will serve as an intro to this video you are watching right now, but will also serve as an announcement that I'm going to be making an in-depth video on each of their three LPs, Sports, You're Gonna Miss It All, and Holy Ghost. I already have a video talking about everything that the band did and their impact spoken about in a very broad context, but this trilogy of videos will be very specific to each individual album, mainly discussing the content within each one on a more meticulous level. And sprinkled in for flavor will be any events surrounding each album that I can remember, like that time Brendan shaved an avatar arrow into his head, because I was somehow lucky enough to begin closely following them right at the moment they released sports, something I'll be thankful for for the balance of my life. These videos are going to be very personal to me, and at times I may include some of my experiences, which I hope only makes this series a little more relatable and accessible. With that being said, here we go. Jake and Bren saved up all summer to press their first album on vinyl. Little did they know that would be one of the best investments of time and money that they would ever make. Who would have thought that a little rock and roll album self-recorded in their school studio would take them so many places and make so many waves? Sports was like nothing I'd ever heard before, and I say that with the utmost degree of honesty. Growing up, I was a very extreme person, very black and white, which I'm sure had a lot to do with wanting to find an identity and all that type of stuff, but sports was the record that really broke me out of that way of thinking. I remember in 8th grade, I came to the sudden realization that deathcore, of all things, was the only good type of music that existed, and all other music just wasn't brutal enough. And I swore off bands like Blink-182 because they just weren't heavy enough. Shortly after that phase, I began my next obsessive music phase where I thought that bands like The Wonder Years, The Story So Far, and Handguns were just the best type of music and I would not hear otherwise. This was circa 2011 to late 2012 when I discovered sports. I found Modern Baseball through the great website called Bandcamp.com, a website where you can make music and upload it for people to listen to. Extremely similar to SoundCloud. But here's the thing, I know I would have discovered this album either way because the boys were good friends with a man named Zach Zarillo, who also attended Drexel University and ran my favorite music blog, Property of Zach. This is a topic for another video, but the work of Zach and his blog were were so crucial and integral to the growth of modern baseball in groups like Knuckle Puck, Real Friends, and Sorority Noise. The impact that this man had on this general scene of music was unprecedented. Please let me know if anyone watching remembers Property of Zach and Zach's utterly absurd and borderline dangerous work ethic. My first listen to sports went a little something like this. I was sitting in the family office with my cousin Ben after doing our nightly longboard riding and I put on tears over beers. I told my cousin Ben that it just kind of sounded like he was talking and not really singing. I remember he asked, me, you like this? And I said, no, because first and foremost, I was embarrassed at the notion that I may actually like this, and I also hadn't completely made up my mind on it. But the next morning, I found myself going back to it, and it turns out I did like it. A lot. But I can remember being kind of uneasy about enjoying it so much because to be honest with you all, I was very insecure about my music taste at that time. My entire identity was tied to my music taste and my self-worth was derived off how people perceived it and viewed it. As sad as that probably makes me sound, that's just me being honest about how I was in my teen years. Lost in looking for validation and a sense of belonging. And in a lot of ways, I think sports was the record that I unknowingly needed to navigate through that weird time in my life. Sports is the culmination of everything you feel as you begin to grow up. Every vulnerable moment and every memorable night you spend with your friends doing nothing but laughing. Awkward encounters with girls, not feeling like you fit in, and navigating the strange sea of teenage love that often ends as fast as it starts. This album acts as a life raft and compass during those turbulent teenage years. I want to start from the top, maybe like a do-over, is the first lyric we hear on track one, Redo, sung by Brendan Lukens. This is not only a clever way to open the album, but it kind of tells us what Brendan wants out of it himself, a chance for a do-over. 
a rebirth. This song is an existential crisis talking in metaphors like wanting to go extinct like Triceratops or more literally changing your name and moving away. This is our first taste of Brendan's extremely unique and overtly honest lyricism that will be present throughout the rest of the album. My personal favorite line on this is, but I love loving watching movies, sitting back and also breathing, which is his internal conflict trying to figure out whether or not he enjoys his life or wants it to end, and reflects on how his friends and family would feel if he executed that decision. While Brendan does a majority of the singing on sports, Jake does have his shining moments as well. The first we get to hear of Jake is in the song that follows called Tears Over Beers. The way Jake writes is similar to Brendan, but Jake's lines are much more observational and specific, but still maintain that same level of honesty and vulnerability. The way Jake uses the line, a syndrome of sorts in my bones, is actually pretty genius and it took me a few years to realize what he was saying. He's using this line to convey how awkward it can be to talk to girls as a teen and young adult, not really able to tell them how you feel, if you can even muster up the courage to talk to them at all. This is exemplified in the lines that follow. She realized if she wanted conversation, she's out of luck for three more years, which is likely a reference to freshman year of high school, saying that until everyone graduates and grows out of their awkward phase, there likely won't be any real or meaningful conversations. It's no secret that Jake has a knack for songwriting, and this track was just a little glimpse into how he'd blossom as a musician as time went on. His attention to detail is like no other. He's a young John K. Sampson. The song eventually comes full circle as he realizes that this girl that's next to him also has a syndrome of sorts in her bones. Meaning she's not able to tell Jake that she's either interested or not interested, but it's likely the latter, because her face starts to shine when that meathead behind her is grinning as he's checking her out. The way Jake demonstrates growth is very subtle yet very effective. When he initially says, that girl who's next to me, it's followed by, wait, next to right next to me, oh god. But the next time it's mentioned, those lines are omitted and he's now able to see that they both had a syndrome of sorts. This works so well and hits in the way it does because everyone, no matter matter what, has liked someone that hasn't liked them back. Which isn't exactly an original idea for a song, but what makes it so special is Jake's commentary on this. Sometimes you like someone that doesn't like you, and sometimes they just suck, and sometimes you just suck, but most importantly, it's usually the both of you that suck. He couldn't tell the girl that he liked her, and she couldn't tell him that she didn't like him. A situation that sounds all too familiar to 16 year old me. To lift our spirits after the emotional roller coaster that is Tears Over Beers, we have a song called The Weekend, a Brendan track. Having fun with your friends, partying it up, and enjoying those times to the fullest extent that you can. That is what The Weekend is all about, in a literal sense but those are also the topics discussed in this track. The Weeknd has one of the most iconic music videos that this genre has to offer, showcasing a ginormous house party in the house that the band lived in. If that's not punk, then I don't know what is. The most memorable lines would have to be the chorus where you got a smile that could light this town and we might need it because it gets real dark around here, is shouted loudly and passionately. Most likely, Brendan is referencing a girl that he likes and when he says, you got a smile that could light this town, I personally believe that town is Brendan and the girl lights it up when things get dark for him, when he's depressed, feeling low, that type of darkness. It's crazy to think how young these guys were when they wrote and produced sports versus how good and interesting some of these lyrics are. Even if you don't see artistic merit in them, you can at least admit they're pretty interesting. These are like the first songs you wrote. Some really good songs. While I doubt that Modern Baseball was the first band to reference social media and music, Sports was the first album that I heard with social media references to sites like Facebook and Twitter. At Chloe K is the first we get of these social media references. The first line in the song is actually really interesting to look back on years later. I'd rather spend my evening talking to Chloe on Twitter. In late 2012, social media was big, no doubt, but staying at home on social media, never leaving your house, seeing people in real life, and not having any actual friends wasn't established as the social norm like it is today in 2019. These days it would be more weird to want to leave your house or to want to have people over. I say that tongue in cheek, but in a lot of ways it's kind of true. So hearing Brendan speak of it in that way is of course interesting, but also pretty sad. Note the way he talks about iPhones and phone use in general, it just gets more sad the more you think about it. The two lines that stick out the most are knee deep in your iPhone and buried in my cell phone. In present day you actually stick out like a sore thumb if you're not knee deep in your iPhone, especially in public. And a lot of times you'll see groups of friends hanging out 
out, but everyone is just on their phone. Being buried in our phones isn't even something that we observe anymore because it's now so ingrained into our culture. Track six is called Hours Outside the Snow, and it's always been a really weird song for me. It never stood out to me, and that seems to be the case for others, but at the same time, I think many would agree, including myself, that this song hits. But for some reason, this is the song that I forget the most off any song on sports. And I think I've finally pinned down why this song doesn't stick as hard as the rest of the songs on sports. While it's a great song in all measurable aspects, there's nothing super iconic about it like all the other tracks. Chloe K has the build up where Brendan's singing escalates to an impassioned yell, The Weeknd has the infectious chorus complete with gang vocals, and Tears Over Beers has the aw come on part. Just little things that make the track stay fresh in your mind. Hours Outside in the Snow has none of this. But the part I always remember the most is, sober or not, I locked everything you sent me, cause what's better than seeing what I'm missing daily? It reminds me of breaking it off with someone and then having to see their social media posts for the rest of my life since we decided to remain friends. I think you're in my profile picture once marks the halfway point through this album and slows things down for a minute before going into the rest of the tracks. Brendan details a nervous, awkward encounter with a girl, but the lyrics are pretty vague and open to interpretation. I've always pictured the story behind this song something like this. So you go to an event, let's say a local show, and you know that after the concert, there's a party at your friend's house that everyone will be attending, basically an after party. At the show, you meet this girl. You end up liking her and want to tell her before the party, well, the both of you are still conscious and coherent. If you don't do it then, you'll likely never have the chance again, especially once the drinks start flowing. And it's not likely you'll ever hang out with this girl one on one since you don't know her at all and just met her. Your only chance of ever hanging out with her again is if you tell her that you like her and she agrees to go get coffee or something. Diving into the second half of this LP, we start with the masterpiece that is Redone. Even today, nearly seven years later, I'm still blown away at how good this song is. It directly builds off the album's opener, Redo, with the first lines being, she said let's start from the top. We get a detailed view of Brendan's relationship and the inner workings and dynamic of that partnership. The first two verses are from the perspective of the girl and that's made very clear through lines like, you got a lot of nerve complimenting me through choruses and rhyme. And as she's going on about everything, Brendan cuts her off with, but that's when I stopped to listen or care. He goes on to tell her how much of an impact she's had on him, she stole his heart like he stole her hometown lingo. He concludes his verses saying that he kinda sucks in some ways but promised promises that he's changed this time around for the better and wants to start anew. The concluding verses reflect on what outsiders may think of their relationship, but they are quick to note how confident they are that their love can make it past these wild party filled nights and develop into something deep and lasting. You really can't do this song justice with words, you have to feel it. If you've never heard it, please go listen, it's worth your time. We then have Jake's best song on the album, Cook. This is another one that I feel is a little overlooked and underrated, but dang, it's so freaking good. Jake is at the top of his game lyrically with this one. For this song, I want to focus on a particular verse I've always been fascinated with and wasn't able to understand until years after hearing it for the first time. The first few stones are the worst. They fall in unnoticed and scare you for more than they're worth. And all at once, you will not hear your own words. There's this entrepreneur named Gary V, and I remember in one of his talks, he discussed how no one is born hating themselves. No baby comes out of the womb and is like, yep, I suck. That stuff is put in your head from the people around you. Maybe your friends, your parents, your teachers, whatever. But it doesn't come from you. It comes from other people. On this particular verse of Cook, I believe Jake is using stones as a metaphor for negative or disparaging things that might be said to you. To help further visualize what he's saying, think of literally throwing rocks at people and physically damaging them. I think he's also kind of playing off the whole sticks and stones saying from when we were kids. At first, the insults like, hey, you suck, or just whatever, and you don't really pay much attention to him, but that stuff can cut really deep over time, and I think that's what he's referencing when he says, scare you for more than they're worth. And then over time, you don't even hear your own thoughts or ideas, just the negative stuff that people have hurled at you over the years. It's a lot to think about, and that's why I love Jake's lyrics so much. They make me really sit down and try to figure out the core message of what he's trying to present. Come on, dude, just take one more shot. The last four tracks on this thing are great, don't get me wrong but I do have a little complaint slash criticism. They're too short. I love all four of these songs so much, but I just feel like they're begging to be developed and fleshed out. It pains me to this day that Look Out is less than a minute long. Starting with See a Sucker, a fast, catchy two minute tune, we immediately get another dose of Brendan's playful brand of lyricism. I reckon you grew up in a town that said reckon all the time. Brendan tells us about how he likes this girl that lives in a town that she supposedly hates, but is hesitant to leave because she's also kind of attached to it 
it in a weird way. He goes on to express to her that if she doesn't leave, he's going to. Essentially saying you can leave with me or stay here without me. It's such a weird feeling to hate something but also be kind of attached to it because you hate it and it's so familiar. As unhealthy as that probably is, I'd wager that everyone has an experience like that in their lifetime. Look Out is exactly 55 seconds long and it's a dang shame. It's so catchy, it's got this rhythm to it that just makes it get stuck in your head despite it being under a minute long. I wish they would have fleshed it out more because I honestly think it would have been a hit like The Weeknd or Tears Over Beers. It has the most Brendan line I've ever heard. Find a pretty girl to take home late at night to hold my sweaty palms and stuff. I don't think I'll ever be able to listen to their song Play Ball without picturing Jake and Bren up on the roof with a guitar singing this song. Um. We're Modern Baseball, this song is called Play Ball, and it's off our first full length, Sports. I've never been able to decide what season this song reminds me of, because when Bren says I love when the record echoes, it reminds me of the trees, I can't help but think of a certain season, but I always vacillate between it being a fall and summer song. Play Ball has some of my favorite lyrics on the record. Swim through the sky, when it's night, and let the stars be my sea breeze. Just the way they sing this song, the lyrics, and the instruments have always made me feel like they just knew and understood things about life on a higher level that couldn't be taught but only gained from experience. The only other other song that gives me this feeling is King of Carrot Flowers Part 1 by Neutral Milk Hotel. Jacob Ewald rounds off this 12 track LP with his slow burner, Coles. This song shows how well Bren and Jake work together and complement one's natural abilities. Because somehow Bren knew how to perfectly open this album, and Jake somehow knew how to flawlessly close it out. It's really nice to end all this on a positive note with the refrain, I'm alright and I'm always getting better. It sends a really good message to their younger, impressionable fans and acts as a bastion of hope for those lost entering their 20s. And the slow build up to the crescendo where he yells, kicked out of the liquor store is an unexpected treat that only serves to give the song more of an identity. And I promise you will never be angry again after this. Kicked out of the liquor store, but we're not the type of guys to fall asleep on the floor anyway. But my personal favorite part has always been, you want to join me for dinner, man I got so much to do. It's not really profound or poetic, but the wording and tone he uses when spitting it out just screams Jake Ewald. I feel like those two lines best sum up his style of writing. Very observational, very thoughtful, and kinda quirky. I think what makes sports such a pure record is that they're not really trying. Not in terms of effort, because clearly a lot of work went into this album. But there were no expectations for it is what I'm getting at. They didn't have much of a follow Following when they put this out, they had just entered college and started a band to be a journal of that experience. They were just regular dudes playing the music that they wanted to be playing, and through extremely hard work and a touch of luck, they were able to make their dreams come true. They treated their fans like family and never took anything for granted. You could always tell how thankful they were to have fans that adored them so much. The first video interview I ever saw of them was when Run For Cover Records used to do these segments called Small Talks. They were just on the couch answering questions while laughing and it was so easy to pick up on the fact that they were just being true to themselves and having fun while doing it. Guy who had a, an orange jumpsuit on and shackles. Yo! <laughs> who's hey, walking. Cool. Walking with his daughter, and on the back of his jumpsuit, it said, Jail is for suckers. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay, well that's a very good representation of our neighborhood. So that's like what it's like. They made you want to be friends with them. And as mentioned in their documentary, they were magnetic. When they won, it felt like you won because they felt like your best friends. Sports is one of those records where it's definitely not perfect and it has its flaws, but to me, it is perfect. I was super fortunate to discover it when I did and have it at my side during my teenage years. I can't believe it's nearly seven years old and I can't believe modern baseball is gone. I guess all we can do at this point is make videos about them to keep their spirit alive. The next episode in this series is going to be on You're Gonna Miss It All. Let me know your feedback on this video. Let me know if there's anything you wanna hear me talk about in the next episode, like events surrounding the record, a certain part of a song, analyze parts of a music video. I'm open to anything. And I always take what you mates have to say very seriously and appreciate criticism that is constructive. Have an outstanding balance of your day. Thank you for watching.